that's new for me. I'm still learning about uh, just all of this, like, how does this look in the world? How do, how do, like, what's my right action in the world? And a dear friend who I respect deeply pointed out, like, something about what happened at the Capitol that, like, <laughs> you kind of, if you've been paying attention, that this shouldn't have been a surprise, meaning, it, 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 okay, there's a, an idea that what if, what if this wasn't additional badness added to the world? What if it was what is, um, a pain within us being revealed, being mm -hmm. made more explicit. And so in that, that's what I mean by like this hopefulness of like, when we do, we're, when we're reconciling stuff, the first thing that happens within us is the, is the conflict that arises, right? Yeah. And so it's like, it's the facing of, of that which has maybe been hidden or shadowed in our society. And it is now up and, and in the daylight for healing. And so really kind of having that stance, and again, I understand this is this is my personal stance, uh, but that's what I'm inviting into the space of like, because each of us has to decide for ourselves, like, where do we stand in this? What is this for, for me? You know, how will I respond to this? Who will I be in the midst of this? Yeah. And for me, this is a choice of like, oh my God, there's a voice I haven't listened to. There's an underground that I, I've been privileged enough to not to have to hear. And so what is that voice? What, what is that need? And you touched on it as I, I believe a big part of that need is, is the people who may not even be, who may not be minorities, persons of color, but who have felt exiled yeah. by our society. Yeah. Who have felt exiled and, and, and the need for all of us to belong. And, um, and to feel that sense of belonging. Because some people are like, oh, that was stupid. Why did this guy like videotape himself doing this? <laughs> you know? well. And, <laughs> well, and I was like, well, no, that's not stupid. Like, okay, you can look at it from the outside and just think, oh, people are stupid. Or you can look at it like, what if he's not stupid? What if, if I believe that something that I was doing was actually for the good and the people, at least in my peer group, would think this was courageous and brave and this, you can bet I'd be showing it off. You know, like that's another perspective to take that that kind love, of also gives credit to that person's. You know? I, I love your, I love your seeing the best in everyone. I think it's a nice mix of stupidity. I'm, that, that's where I am right now. <laughs> stupidity but also privilege also white privilege right yeah. because it's like uh, uh, one of the comments from one of the people at the capitals the reporter she said she doesn't understand why the police are shooting at them they're supposed to shoot at black lives matter and when i heard oh that God. right i was like like that just stunned me into silence but it's a reflection of i think folks I agree to your point. There, there, there is that certain element of, you know, them believing themselves to be freedom fighters. I'm using air quotes for the audio listeners, right, freedom right. fighters. And, and they were happy and proud to show the world. But there was also this extent of, of, of a white privileged sense of we can do this we sh and and we with impunity. will with impunity thank yes. you yes there's so there's an element of that too and also let's be clear which i can finally get myself to a place of <clears throat> of of um recognizing is that all the forty thousand people or however many tens of thousands of people i don't know how many thousands were there um on that day for the rally were not going there with the intention to break into the Capitol, right? Mm -hmm. there, there, were a, there were specific people who that was their plan. And there was a lot of online chatter about it. And there were also folks who were there to, to support the lie, the fraud that the election was stolen, but they were campaigning, they were, they were rallying, they were, they were enthusiastic supporters for a doomed cause, but but the the intent to harm was not there. And I know we want to paint things in terms of like right or wrong sort of deal. I'm saying like there's a spectrum of folks who showed up there. And I remember uh, a friend of mine who lives down in D.C., he was like the morning, uh, you know, because people, if you've never been to D.C., like so much of the of that downtown mall area where the Capitol is and where the White House is. Like there's, there's no parking anywhere there at all for security reasons, for a lot of different reasons. So a lot of people parked like in different parts of DC over the bridge in Virginia and they walked 
you know, mile or two to that venue. And he said in the morning, like folks were like, you know, there was this jubilant sense of we're, we're coming to, to be at a rally and, and, but by the end of the day, there was just, he says, for so many of the people walking back, he's like almost all of them like had the shell shocked look on their face as well. Yeah. Like they didn't believe how this thing devolved the way it yeah. did. It wasn't what they showed up for. So, so as much as I am in my feelings around anger and stuff about what happened, there's also, I'm finally beginning to get to a tender place <laughs> with, with, with some, uh, some of the folks and, and not be in that place of labeling everyone as bad or complicit or, or, or it's a struggle. I'm still struggling. I'm admitted. Well, I, I'm still struggling well, I have to it. confess that as you're re um, hashing the events, I'm getting more pissed. Okay. So, <laughs> Yes. This is about interviews, but like, yes. yes, that was outrageous. <laughs> you know, so, 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 my work is know, done here. And, and